What's up everybody, Brian here with BPS Customs and today we're going to be talking about the best tiny package I've ever personally received. Yes, we are talking about what you think we're talking about, the 6900K. Intel hasn't released a new line of enthusiast grade processors since all the way back in August of 2014 when they unveiled Haswell E at PAX Prime. At that time, they brought to market a trio of processors topping out with the $1000 8-core 5960X. Those processors were based on the Haswell architecture, which was actually introduced over a year prior to that in early 2013. Although the Haswell line did go through a mid-cycle refresh, it's understandable that enthusiasts have been clamoring for something new for some time now. The Haswell E chip did bring a lot to the table, but the 22 nanometer manufacturing process was starting to show its age. Enter Intel's newest line of consumer grade processors, Broadwell E. The Broadwell E family consists of four processors, all the way from the budget-oriented 6800K all the way up to the absurdly priced 6950X. Today, we'll focus on the chip that directly replaced the 5960X, the 8-core, 16-threaded 6900K. Although at $1,100, this could hardly be considered a bargain, the price scaling of this family does line up with the previous generation chips. The 5960X was about $1,000 at launch, the 6900K is about $1,100 at launch, but after that, we kind of fly right off the rails with the $1,800 6950X. There's been a lot of recent chatter that for the same cost, you're better off going with one of the new E5 Xeons, which you can get for the same price or cheaper and get 14 or 16 cores along with a huge amount of cash. With the 6900K, at least Intel can point to the fact that consumers have been purchasing $1,000 processors for many years and will likely continue to do so. The 6900K sports the same eight cores with hyperthreading as its predecessor, along with the same 20 megs of L3 cache and the same 140 watt TDP. However, it does offer a number of significant advantages. First, the process node is 14 nanometers instead of 22, meaning that although the TDP does remain the same, the die shrink does result in less current being used per transistor. Theoretically, this should mean that the processor should run cooler, and we'll test that shortly. Secondly, the stock base clock and boost clock are both higher, meaning stock performance should see noticeable gains over the previous generation Haswell E chip. The 6900K also offers higher memory bandwidth than the 5960X, along with the same 40 PCIe lanes, making it an ideal choice for those looking to run three and four way SLI setups. Overclocking the 6900K was fairly straightforward. There seems to be somewhat of a hard cap on the frequency of this chip, as achieving 4.5 GHz was not possible in our testing. We actually were able to obtain 4.4 GHz with relative ease, but no matter what we did with the voltages after that, we couldn't push it any further. I couldn't get the system to post at all at 4.5 GHz no matter what I tried, and I didn't really want to go any further than 1.42 volts. Our test bed for the 6900K included 16 gigs of Crucial Ballistics DDR4 2400 speed memory and the MSI X99A Gaming Pro Carbon motherboard, which you can find our review of right up here. The rest of our test suite included a 4790K, 5820K, and a 5960X. The 5960X in our test suite was provided by my buddy Chris. You could find him right here at Addicted Chris on Twitter. Go check him out. He's got some pretty cool pictures of his three-way 980Ti complete overkill gaming system, uh, and they're pretty neat. All processors were run both on the stock settings as well as the maximum achievable overclock. Unfortunately, one of our tests didn't play nice with the 5960X and we were unable to get a result. Consequently, you'll see that one of the charts that you're gonna see in about three seconds is missing some data. As you can see, as the 6900K does absolutely outperform the previous generation chip, the 5960X, 
For anybody that's currently on Haswell e-architecture, it might be hard to justify the upgrade costs. The 5960X was hanging with the 6900K in almost every single test, and even the 5820K put up respectable numbers. It's likely not enough of a performance upgrade to justify spending $1,100 on this new processor. Those who use their systems mainly for gaming would be much better served choosing Intel's newest flagship mainstream processor, the 6700K. The 6700K offers better single threaded performance and a price tag that's much easier to swallow. With that being said, the 6900K is a monster of a chip in multi-threaded applications. If you're a creative professional dealing with photo editing, video editing, music production, or anything along those lines, Intel is targeting you directly with this release. If you could swallow that enormous price tag, the 6900K will be a workhorse for you for years to come. That's a wrap, guys. Jam on that like button, hit that subscribe button, and leave a comment in this video if there's anything else you want to know about the 6900K or anything else. I have a lot more coming up. I got a couple 1070s in the studio right now. The reviews are going to be coming out pretty soon, let's say. I got to work on those. Uh, and a couple other things are going to be happening around the office that I'm going to get videos out on. So definitely get subscribed and stay tuned. Also, follow me on Twitter, BPS underscore customs. Shoot me a tweet. Say hello. Anything you want to do. But as always, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.